Hi all, I am Dr. Kathyaini, MD resident, Department of Emergency Medicine, Amrita Institute of Medical Science, Cochin. Today, I am going to present a case of drowning that was presented to our ER. Coming to the case, a 32-year-old male was rolled into ER with Ali's history of drowning. Initial 10-second assessment, patient was responsive to verbal commands and was tachypneic with uh, increased work of breathing. Coming to primary survey, airway, secretions were present and C-spine was stabilized with a Philadelphia collar. Coming to breathing, patient was tachypneic with a respiratory rate of more than 30 per minute and patient had a saturation of 80% in room air. And on auscultation, uh, air entry was bilaterally present but bilateral V's was there. Coming to circulation part, patient's heart rate was 126 per minute regular and BP was 110 by 80 millimeters of mercury and all peripheral pulses were felt equally bilaterally. Coming to disability, patient's GCS was E3, V5 and 6 and pupils were 2.5 millimeter equally reacting to light and GRBS was 105 milligram per deciliter. Coming to exposure, there was no obvious external uh, severe injuries and hypothermia was prevented by a warm blanket. Coming to adjuncts to primary survey, at this point we had uh, started the patient on supplemental oxygen with a face mask and uh, we had secured two large bore IV cannulas and uh, we had asked for a arterial blood gas analysis and a patient was connected to cardiac monitors. So, uh, ABG showed respiratory alkalosis with a hypoxia and hyperlactatemia with a uh, lactate of 8.8 .8 and cardiac monitors showed sinus tachycardia. And coming to uh, the ample history, patient uh, has no known allergies, no uh, relevant medical or surgical history in the past. Patient's last meal was uh, about 2 hours back and there was history of alcohol intake. Coming to events leading to the, uh, the current uh, symptom, patient uh, had a alleged history of drowning in flowing water which was uh, contaminated uh, under the influence of alcohol. He had fell with uh, head down and uh, he had complaints of uh, chest tightness and uh, breathlessness uh, after being resuscitated from there and uh, patient had no history of any seizures, head trauma or LOC. Patient had uh, two episodes of vomiting on the way to ER and uh, coming to secondary survey uh, patient uh, uh, head to toe examination was done patient uh, had uh, no uh, in uh, examination of head there was no external injuries uh, no history of any uh, seizures uh, and uh, no history of any ENT bleed uh, and uh, there was two episodes of vomiting coming to uh, C spine examination patient C spine was uh, already stabilized with a C collar, there was no obvious C spine deformities present. Coming to examination of neck, uh, there was no signs of any blunt or penetrating injuries, there was uh, no tracheal deviation, no carotid brewery and uh, coming to examination of chest, there was uh, no external injuries, uh, patient, uh, on palpation there was no features of any subcutaneous emphysema chest compression test was negative and air entry was bilaterally present uh, with a bilateral uh, V's was there. Uh, per abdomen examination, uh, there was no obvious external injuries uh, and on examination, uh, abdomen was distended uh, and uh, there was no uh, obvious guarding or rigidity. Uh, coming to spine uh, examination, low growl was done and there was no spinal deformity and no obvious spinal tenderness. Coming to pelvis and perineum examination, uh, patient uh, PCT was uh, negative and uh, there was no uh, external hematoma or bleeding and uh, musculoskeletal examination patient was moving all four limbs and there was no obvious uh, injuries and there was no obvious uh, range of movement re restrictions and uh, at this point like uh, primary survey was uh, again VSS and uh, with the uh, supplemental oxygen patients uh, Saturation had improved to 88% uh, but severe bronchospasm persisted. So uh, we had put him on bronchodilators but uh, in view of the persisting bronchospasm we had preferred to go for an early intubation uh, because the tachypnea along with this uh, 
drowning may precipitate a laryngospasm which will cause a difficult airway later so we had preferred to go for a early uh, intubation so rapid sequence, uh, sequence intubation was done and uh, uh, in uh, in that procedure we had initially cleared the airway uh, suctioning was done uh, we had secured two large bore iv cannulas uh, we had prepared the uh, equipment and we had used the et tube of size 8 and uh, the drugs used were uh, fentanyl was given as a sedator uh, we had given a prokinetic agent uh, and uh, we had uh, used uh, etomidate as a sedator and uh, rocuronium as a uh, paralytic agent so after uh, ad administration of the drugs, uh, the uh, airway was uh, uh, visualized uh, with a laryngoscope and we had used a uh, 8 size ET tube for intubation and patient was connected to ventilator in a PCV mode. Uh, after that, uh, we had given a gastric decompression by uh, uh, inserting a nasogastric tube uh, and uh, then we had uh, gone with further investigations. So we had taken a chest x-ray which uh, showed increased bronchovascular markings and uh, CT brain was done uh, because the patient had a history of fall uh, with a head down position and we had no history of whether like any head trauma was there. So we had gone for a CT brain uh, which showed no features of any brain injury. Uh, EFAST was uh, done uh, which was negative and uh, a C-spine x-ray was done which was also within normal limit. Uh, and uh, routine blood investigations were sent. Patients' uh, total count was uh, around 8,000 with a hemoglobin of uh, 15 and a platelet count of uh, 250,000. And uh, the um, electrolytes were within the normal range. And uh, the only altered parameter was the creatinine, which was essentially 1.69 milligram per uh, deciliter. Uh, and coming to the management uh, part, uh, we had like al already secured the airway, uh, we had uh, done a gastric decompression, we had put him on bronchodilators and in view of the uh, contaminated water in which like uh, the patient had uh, drowned, we had started him on an uh, antibiotic, we had put, uh, initially started him with a piperacillin uh, thasobactam and uh, he was admitted to the emergency ICU. So uh, the further cause in the ICU, the, the patient uh, like vitals and uh, parameters were uh, monitored, patient uh, uh, hemodynamically uh, improved and uh, his uh, ventilator requirements reduced and he could be extubated within 36 hours of uh, admission. Patient's uh, creatinine value had worsened to 3.2 on the second day but it later uh, improved and he was stabilized. Uh, patient was uh, like uh, the x-ray showed uh, a right lower zone haziness which also improved in the course of hospital stay and on the fifth day of admission patient was uh, hemodynamically and clinically stable and better and he was hence discharged so uh, this was the uh, drowning case that had presented to my er and uh, the, uh, to summarize the case and uh, the challenges in this case is uh, we had uh, preferred for an early intubation in this patient uh, because uh, the laryngospasm uh, can set in which can uh, later causes uh, like a difficult uh, intubation or a difficult airway management. So we had preferred for an early intubation and uh, in view of the contaminant water in which he was uh, drowned and all, we had put him, started him on antibiotics and we had admitted him to the ICU. And his uh, cardiac parameters were also uh, monitored regularly uh, in view of the possible chances of uh, arrhythmias associated with a drowning and hypothermia was also uh, strictly uh, prevented and all the measures to prevent uh, hypothermia was uh, done and uh, all the uh, metabolic parameters and uh, renal parameters were uh, monitored uh, routinely and uh, this was uh, how the patient uh, was managed and thank you.